Welcome back to another episode of Comedy's Dead. I'm Sandra. I'm your host. And I don't know how many of you out there are into any celebrity gossip. Um, I kind of am sometimes. And if you are, then you're going to enjoy this because guess what? Britney Spears is in the news again. I mean, she's always in the news. I mean, she's always been in the news. She has dominated that genre of, I guess, media. I don't know what it's called. But whatever, that type of media she's dominated since the moment she got here. And I love Britney Spears. I grew up on Britney Spears. And I remember when she first started, it was, what was it, 99-ish, I think. I was a sophomore in high school. It was the spring of my sophomore year. And I remember it when she first came out because all the guys were obsessed with her. I mean, they just thought she was the hottest female they had ever seen. So you would be sitting there listening to your boyfriend talk about how hot Britney Spears is. And it's like, uh, Britney's not the one blowing you in the back of your parents' car every weekend. That's me. I mean, she's not the one with the rug burns on both of her knees. Britney's not doing that. So it was, I just I remember it. And I I love Britney Spears. I'm not giving her shit. I'm just saying. But that's how it was. That's how it was for all the girls, you know, growing up when she first came out. But there was this documentary that just came out. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But um, no, actually, we'll just talk about it now. We'll talk about the documentary now because I kind of lost my train of thought because I have a wild animal trying to get in my bedroom door right now. So I get a little I get it. It's it interrupts me. But anyways. So let's talk about this uh, documentary that came out. It was called The Price of Freedom. And because she just ended her conservatorship, that was what, 15 or 14 years? She, her dad had control of everything that she did. But um, in this documentary, and I don't know how much of it's actually real. It could just, a lot of it could just be clickbait. But they said that her marriage with Sam... I don't know what his last name is. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. But um, it starts with an A. He's the Iranian uh, personal trainer. He's hot. I mean, he is hot. I would bang him no problem. But anyways, in this documentary, they claim that the marriage is on the rocks and that it's been reported that she's gotten physical with him and she's not allowed to be around knives. Like she sleeps with a knife under her bed and she gets physical with her husband. And then they brought on that uh, celebrity doctor, Drew Pinsky. You know, he has the white hair. I'm not even sure if he's an actual doctor, but he's on all of the talk shows and the celebrity stuff. And he was just saying how, you know, if you're getting physical with a significant other, how horrible it is and how you need help. And she's suffering all this mental illness. And I'm like, dude, shut up. What the hell are you talking about? I'm sorry, but if you have never gotten physical with a significant other, it's because you're ugly. And no one's trying to steal your boyfriend because he's broke. I mean, that is just a fact of life, folks. Hot people get physical with their significant others because people are always trying to steal them. And, you know, that's what's going on. And all this talk about Britney being crazy and needing interventions. I mean, guys, this poor woman has been living pinned to a dissection table for decades now. Like she's a frog in a seventh grade science class or something. Just sliced open for the world to pick apart. I mean, that's what, and I'm just as guilty because I consume this clickbait stuff too. I'm over there like, you don't need a heart, bitch. Throw that against the wall. I mean, no, they have. They have taken her freedom, her voice, her money, her kids, everything, privacy. I mean, and now she finally gets a little bit of freedom. And now all these Instagram hoes are out there trying to steal her husband. So she's fighting back with knives. I mean, can you blame her? I mean, he's hot. And you know what, Brittany? Do what you need to do to defend that dick. Because broke dick is the best dick. Just don't shank any trans bitches because that's a hate crime. That will get you in trouble in this country. But all the rest of the hoes, you're fine. I don't know. I mean, Brittany, clearly, you like the broke dick. That's what I'm thinking. Because Kevin Federline, total broke dick. He was a backup dancer. The Sam guy, total broke dick. 
And, you know, I have a broke. I, I, I was hooking up with a broke dick once. And you know what, Brittany? We have so much in common. His name was Sam. And he was a total broke dick. But um, uh, you got to watch broke dick. I mean, they're so, they're good. They're cute. They're usually younger than you. And, but, you know, they just, the dick's not free. The dick is not free. I was hooking up with him before the pandemic. And right around the time he got a girlfriend, because I'm 13 years older than him. So clearly it, we were just hooking up. It wasn't anything, you know, other than that. But um, he got a girlfriend and I was going to L.A. So it kind of worked out because, you know, he was really the only reason I would keep going to Chicago to do mics because it was cold and miserable and I have a horrible sense of direction. So if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have made it through the winter. Anyways, but uh, when I got back and the pandemic hit, we would text each other and we decided that the next time I'm in Chicago, we'll hook up. So I had to go... to Chicago for a podcast and I get a hotel room, finish the podcast. I go get him. I'm so excited because I I don't really ever have sex. I'm the lamest person in the world. And we get to the hotel room and no lie, it wasn't even two minutes from the time we got in the hotel room until the time he came. I mean, it was that quick. Uh, Sorry, my dog's in here. I mean, I have... I've had orgasms that last longer than that. Okay, folks? And so now I just feel completely defeated. Like my self-esteem is just shot because I can't get him hard again. And I paid for this hotel room. And we decided that we would snort some Adderall thinking that would make him hard again. Don't know why we thought that. But it didn't work. Still couldn't get him hard. So then he tells Ozzy, get down. Then he tells me that... um, he has to be at work at seven in the morning. So he was like, would it still be cool if, you know, you just take me home now? And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. But, you know, I wish I would have known that before I paid for a hotel room or, you know, I would have just blown you in the car. I mean, I'm not that bougie. So then, so I'm literally getting kicked out of the bed that I paid for. I take him back to his house and when I'm dropping him off, he has the audacity to ask me for more Adderall because he has to work in the morning. I'm like, dude, it's like 9 p.m. It's not even that big of a deal. But yeah, sure, why not take it all? Take my Adderall, take my Molly, take my shrooms. I mean, my pussy's like a pinata. You never know what's going to drop out. I mean, I don't know. Next time, maybe hit this pussy a little bit harder, and maybe some heroin will drop out. You never know. Anyways, yeah, guys, I'm sorry, but you can't go around getting girls as pussies all hot and bothered and then dip out and leaving it in some... I don't know, burning state of desire, you know, where it's like throbbing because you want to come, but you can't. And then they just leave and then they act all shocked when their house gets burned down. So anyways, that is my broke dick story. I like the broke dicks, but you got to watch them because it's not free. I'm going to put these sunglasses on because I hate the lights. Anyways, back to Brittany. Look, I don't know if Brittany is really crazy or not. And honestly, I really don't care because Britney Spears is my spirit animal. She is. She got a tramp stamp. I got a tramp stamp. She had a broke dick. I had a broke dick. But listen, I mean, you have to you have to give it to the girl. I mean, making your cheating ex-husband watch your kids while you bang a personal trainer and your ex gets kicked off of Celebrity Fit Club. I mean, that's rock star shit right there, folks. Yes, it is. I mean, it's the American dream. I mean, let Kevin go drive around town all day looking for glow-in-the-dark paint for a birthday party. I mean, mommy's busy popping pills in Ibiza with Tiesto. That's winning, unlike Charlie Sheen. I mean, Britney is the American dream. I mean, she comes from what? Some podunk poo, Kentwood, Louisiana? I did a deep dive. I looked into all this stuff because, I mean, I'm a fan, but I'm not one of those like fans that, you know, get on their Wikipedia and know everything about them. I don't I'm not that crazy. But um, no, she really is living the American dream. She is the American dream. And, you know, that's why people don't like her. And most people do like her. But her haters out there, they're just jealous because, you know, their life sucks. And 
yours doesn't. So that's why we want the clickbait. That's why we want to see you fail and, you know, gain weight or, you know, I, I don't know, be crazy and do whatever Britney does that makes people think that you're crazy. But honestly, at the end of the day, she's just a rock star. Totally. I mean, she could have been the next Mick Jagger if, you know, her dad and management team wouldn't have kept her all doped up on all the, you know, government approved legal drugs for all those years. Ozzy, get down. And I did, like I said, I did a deep dive. And when the whole conservatorship went down, and even like the few months after it first went down, Brittany wasn't even allowed to choose her own counsel. Like she had a lawyer. She was trying to fight it for the, even like a year after that, she was trying to fight it. But they wouldn't let her have her own attorney. She got some state appointed attorney. Like, and the, a judge approved that. It was the most bullshit thing I had ever seen in my life. And I read that and I'm thinking, now I want to be a crazy fan. Like, I wish I would have known that then because I would have went and keyed that judge's car. Like, it's Britney, bitch. Like, the, I, I was just so, sometimes it's okay to be crazy. Like, if you want to key a judge's car, do it. Because that was one of the most ridiculous things I, I had read. I, I was blown away. I, I can't believe, I don't know how you're not setting fires. I'm surprised you're not, like, when all the BLM went down. How were you not out there just rioting and burning shit down? Like, me too, bitches. That's what I would have been like. I Wow, girl. I, and I'm buying the book. I am buying the Britney book. I cannot wait till it comes out. And I'm going to make my kid read it this summer because I want her to know that it is a man's world. I don't know what they teach you in school these days, but at the end of the day, it is still a man's world. And my dog is driving me nuts. Anyways, and what do they call Britney? What is she, the princess of pop? And they call Madonna the queen of pop which I think is bullshit. Listen, I love Madonna. She was first, but Britney, Britney is the queen of pop. And what they say, Michael Jackson is the king of pop. No, sorry, not in my book. They need to take that title away from that pedo, Michael Jackson, and give it to Britney Spears. Britney Spears is the king of pop. She has the biggest dick out of all of you guys. I mean, yes, yeah, she's, the, she's the biggest dick in town. I mean, where was the paparazzi? following Michael Jackson around all those years. No one followed him around when he was jet setting with all those little boys and no one was trying to figure out, you know, what kind of relationship he had going on, with Macaulay Culkin or whatever, the kid from Home Alone. Where are the paparazzi on that one? Nobody cares. I mean, but they followed Britney around. I mean, that poor girl couldn't even take a shit without somebody, you know, sticking a camera in her face. And what, they tapped her phone? Her parent, I mean, her dad and the management team, and they had they hired security that tapped her phones. I mean, look at Crystalia. No one's tapping his phone, and he's still out there texting girls all the time and messaging them on Instagram and getting them over on Snapchat, and I don't know what he's doing. I mean, they're all legal age, so it's not a big deal. We can talk about this, all right? I know he says that he's in rehab, but come on. He's the type of guy, and there's just guys out there like this, but he's the type of guy that it doesn't matter. Like, he's just, he, he wants the pussy, and he's going to do whatever he can to get it. I mean, he'll stick a burner phone up his ass to sneak out of the house he's that type of guy I mean and, and it's not gonna be you know influencers on TikTok you know now as he's getting older now he's gonna be hitting up the TikTok moms so that's just how that works folks but where no one's monitoring his phone and what did Michael Jackson Michael Jackson held his kid over a balcony held his kid over a balcony and he didn't have any you know legal intervention there wasn't no one tried to take his kids away or make him what have supervised visitation no one gave a shit I mean, come on this though it is a man's world I mean Britney Spears had a what was it? A spat with her ex-husband, with her cheating scumbag ex-husband. She had a little spat and she locked herself in the bathroom with one of her little boys. And she got a 5150 hold for that. Yeah, they, they called her crazy. But meanwhile, her ex-husband, who before she even filed for divorce, he left her home alone breastfeeding the baby while he's out at the club cheating on her with her money. 
No one called him crazy for that. I mean, that's bonkers. I had that happen to me. It is the most demoralizing thing a man could ever do to you is go out and cheat on you and leave you home with his kid attached to your tit. And there's just milk and it's gross. And they just leave you and nobody cares. And that's not crazy. I mean, where was the paparazzi on that? Where was the media calling out this douchebag about these horrible things that he was doing to Britney? Nobody cares. So then she files for divorce. So now she has to pay for not only her lawyers, but she has to pay for his lawyers who are trying to what? Screw her over. And, you know, and, and the, the lawyers, they work together. That's how it works in these custody and, you know, marriage you know, divorce attorneys, they work together because they know the longer it plays out, the more money they make. The, the, the longer these two hate each other and they can't agree on anything, then the lawyers make more money. That's how it works. And Brittany didn't know that because what, was she 25? She was just a baby herself. So now she's losing all this money. She has to pay for Federline's rent, his car, his lawyer's, you know, a nanny, she has to pay for a nanny so he can still go out to the club and, you know, chase pussy around all night. And now she has to, what, hand her kids over to some court-appointed security in-between person that's going to take the kids and go to the nanny because Kevin's out at the club. So she had a breakdown and she locked herself in a bathroom with one of her boys because why should she hand the damn kid over to, you know, some nanny? Like, why not? Why can't I just get a few more hours with my kid because I'm paying for the nanny? Like, it doesn't make any sense. And they took her to the psych ward for it. Are you kidding me? I mean, only in America will a mom, a single mom whose husband cheated on her and left her with two kids attached to her titties, you know, they put her in a psych ward, but Ozzy Osbourne, he bites a head off of a bird, one of those doves, one of those pretty white doves, and he got a number one record and a world tour. And it wasn't like he did it in the privacy of his home. I mean, he went into the conference room at Epic Records, sat on one of the the label chairs, the I don't know, whoever was in charge, and picked up a dove and bit its head off and spit it on the floor. And it, it, it launched his solo career. Brittany had to go to, they, they had to strap her to a gurney. Are you kidding me? I mean, that's where you went wrong, Brittany. That's, that's where you messed up. You know what? You should have bit Kevin Fetterfuck's dick off. Seri that's what you should have done before they strapped you to that gurney and they wheeled you out with the circus that was going on outside because Kevin called the media and they had the LAPD and they had the helicopters and they had fire trucks and ambulance and it was this big ordeal and really you should have been hanging on to that dick when he that broke dick when they wheeled you into the ambulance just smiling like a rock star with the blood dripping off your lip when they closed the ambulance door, that would have made the most epic Gossip Magazine cover of all time. But, I mean, it is just only in America does this stuff happen, folks. Um, it is just crazy. And then I was reading. I told you I really got into this, okay? I, I'm a single mom. I don't have a life. And I love Britney Spears. But I – so I was – I just, I kind of just started deep diving and reading about stuff. And I was going to pull up a, some clips from the stupid documentary that they did. And when I Googled it, the first thing that came up was something from, I don't know, I think it was page six or something. And it was about how she was at Nobu with her husband on her birthday or something. And there was a lady there who they're interviewing and apparently Brittany snatched her kid, like, out of her arm. It was just a little baby. And they have pictures of Brittany, you know, holding this baby. And, of course, you can see all the extension tracks in her hair, you know. So she just looks a mess. But she's it's a little baby. And this lady, who I think is a model or something, and she's sitting there talking, like, she's like, that hillbilly came up and snatched my baby out of my hand. And I'm thinking, what? I don't think it was like that. I mean, but uh, really, Brittany, if you're snatching babies, you can just have mine. I mean, she's not a baby anymore, but she drives me nuts. And I, I figured, honestly, like you guys, because she's into this makeup thing, and I'm I'm was never really into makeup. 
Um, so I, I'm not very good at helping her. And she doesn't have my face. She, uh, we have different faces. We have different eyes. Um, I mean, she literally looks like, you know, her dad shit her out of his ass or something. So I, I need help. I mean, she, she has like big eyes, so she can actually wear eyeliner. And I, I can't because it just makes my eyes look even smaller. And, but she, it's, she doesn't do it very well. But anyways, I figured you guys could get together and you guys could do some makeup tutorials. We'll put it on TikTok. You know, it'll be like when that little girl put all the clown makeup on Anna Nicole's face. And, you know, and then my kid will make money in the future if you die. And I hope you don't because I really don't think you're crazy. But I, I that popped up on my, my YouTube thing. It's just, the world that we live in is so crazy. You can just... You don't even have to leave the house anymore. Like, no one wants to go to concerts. They can just watch crazy shit on YouTube all day. But the little girl that did that, that that infamous video, they interviewed her as an adult. She's going to school to be a doctor now, which is interesting. I just thought of that. Anyway, so I watched it because I was like, why are they interviewing this girl? But I guess the house that it was at, that uh, Anna Nicole Smith stayed there a lot because she was friends with the parents. And she was pregnant at the time. And yeah, I mean, these people were extremely wealthy. I forget, maybe it was North Carolina. Don't quote me on that. I kind of forget where the house was. And it's irrelevant. But um, big, huge house. They were rich. And now the daughter is going to school to be a doctor. So maybe, just maybe, they were the doctors that prescribed her all those pills. I never thought about that till I started talking about it. But anyways, it's just weird that they released that video and now they're letting their daughter I mean it was just wrong for them to let their daughter do that to Anna Nicole Smith when she was in that state while she was pregnant then release the footage and now you have this little girl talking about how you know how horrible it was that Anna Nicole was you know out of her mind and she was putting makeup clown makeup on her I think that's weird but anyways if you want to do that with my daughter call me we we will set something up she would be glad to do it but um but anyway, so when I was trying to read about the documentary, um, I found another article. It was page six, I do believe, where they were interviewing Kevin Federline and they were talking about your boys, which I think is just such a low blow. But um, the the boys were saying something about how they, they're, they're sick and tired of you, you know, putting out sexy videos all the time where you're you know, half nude or whatever. And you're not. I mean, seriously, like I said, you're a freaking rock star. I mean, does Liv Tyler ever complain about how hard it was watching her dad half naked dance around in Aerosmith? Or any of, is Kelly Osbourne talking about how horrible it was that her dad bit a head off of a bat, you know, on stage multiple times? No, no one cares because they're rock stars. And so here you are and, you know, doing, you're performing, you're doing whatever, you're in a bikini, big deal. And Kevin was saying how the, you know, it upsets the boys and how he tells the boys that it's, you know, probably just another way that, you know, she chooses to her express herself and we should be supportive, even though it's hard. I was like, express herself. What? What are you? It's how she pays the bills. It's how you live in that house. It's how, you know, the kids drive whatever fancy dancy cars that they get and they have designer clothes and you know veneers and it's how that's how she pays the bills come on kevin be a dad jesus anyways but now kids they're overrated and i know i don't like right now my daughter is supposed to be watching the dog and she's not she's just letting him run wild in my room so things are getting a little weird as we get towards the end of this podcast but um no, I mean, if you don't have kids, uh, the the it's like living with a homeless person. It really is. I mean, it's I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. It, it's like I saved you from the shop vac. I mean, what more do you want from me? I mean, I don't even I can't even smoke weed through the week anymore. I can't. I used to be able to do that, but I can't do it anymore because the minute you you hit your one hitter, you know, before they get home, they come in the door and then they want to go somewhere. And then you got to call your ex and be like, look, I'm high. You need to take your kid to the wherever she needs to go. Uh, you know, it's just a pain in the ass. And they don't listen. Um, now, now my kid's in here, so I, I can't talk about getting high anymore. I can't talk about broke dick anymore. I will talk about beating her, though. I, listen, this phone stuff, we got to do something about this phone. 
I mean, you hear all these white men on Twitter every day. The the the, the Elon Musks and the uh, everyone. They're all talking about how you know the the declining birth rate and how horrible it is and how it's going to destroy society. And it's like, you know what? Listen, why don't you push one out of your twat and have a four-inch episiotomy? And then you can talk to me about how divine procreation is, okay? And and these 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 uh these tech people, these AI people, look look what they do. They make all these apps and these phones that the kids get addicted to. I mean, have you and then they want you to have more kids, but they're not around. I mean, they're all divorced, they're living their life doing whatever they want without a blown out pussy. And these phones, there I had to take I tried to take my daughter's phone away about two weeks ago. And I went in because she had gotten into detention and I had had enough. So I, I, you, they don't just give you the phone. You have to physically fight for the phone. So I went in with a wooden spoon and I'm like, you're going to give me the phone. And she's like, no, I'm not. And I'm like, listen, you're, and I, I wasn't going to hit her with the spoon. I just wanted to scare her because I wanted her to give me the phone. And this crazy bitch started jumping around like the little Notre Dame guy, the fighting Irish guy. I, I was flabbergasted. I'm like, oh, my God. At first, I thought she was trying to make me laugh. Uh, she's just trying to make me laugh. And then I swear on my life, she jumped up and smacked me in the face. And I, I was like, oh, this bitch is crazy. So I started hitting her with the spoon. And finally, I got the damn phone. And she followed me out into the living room. And then I had my back turned to her. And the spoon was still in her room. I have her phone in my one hand and my phone in my other hand. Because I was calling her dad to come get this feral child out of my house. And she jumped on my back and put me in a chokehold and tried to fight me for the phone. And I did not give up that phone. I mean, I, I, uh, shut up. You're supposed to be watching the damn dog. Anyways, don't have kids. Don't listen to the, the media hype about how you, you have to procreate. You don't. We have immigrants for that. They come over and they bring their families and they take all the shit jobs that nobody wants. So everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. Don't blow out your pussy if you don't want to. But that has been it for Comedy's Dead because my dog is driving me nuts and the kid's in here. And, um, yeah, anyways, this is what happens when you have a kid. You, you don't get to live your life. You don't. It's over. It's done. Forget about it. So, Brittany, cheers to you. Mom of the Year Award for doing all the cool stuff that you do. And I, I hope, I mean, I, I hope you're still banging broke dick when you're 60. Like Madonna. What is she, like 70 now? 60? I have no clue how old she is. I just know she's dating a 23-year-old. And I can't find anybody to bang. I mean, it's really bad, folks. So cheers to those bitches. Um, yeah, ladies, don't don't have kids. Wait as long as you can. Get as much money as you can. And then buy the dick like a man does. That, that buy one it's that's the that's the new thing to do you just buy whatever dick you want that's that's what you need to do but anyways that's been comedy's dead and i i gotta attend to this shit show in my bedroom so like follow subscribe and that was comedy's dead this week sorry for the interruption but you know it, it sucks being a mom and i i anyways like follow subscribe